So what we're going to deal with is we're going to deal with a class on our people and the end. Okay. So now let's look at something real quick. Let's go to Isaiah, the second chapter. Okay. Isaiah, the second chapter. Yep. <clears throat> Start at verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Okay, we're on. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So, and, and just one more, one more mm -hmm. Okay, verse. verse 4, Isaiah 2 and 4. And mm -hmm. he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So, basically, what's going to happen in the end, uh, it's going to be a, a times on earth where there's going to be peace, right? And then, guess what? When the Most High causes the turmoil and will, the tumult, rather, of the people, we'll see why he did that. Uh -huh. um, what was going to happen? People were going to be, what, against one another, nation against nation. And then the Most High said, in the end, or some point in time, mm -hmm. he's going to establish his people and the Most High's word is going to go forth and it's going to be done. The reason I said his people is because I wanted to read verse 4. Mm -hmm. Because he said, and he shall judge among what? The nations. Yeah. He's not saving or bringing the nations and his doctrine he's bringing his people that are scattered among all nations to his doctrine and then guess what when he does that separation he's going to judge the nations and rebuke who many people and it says that there's going to be no more war at that point and that's yeah. what we have to understand so when you look at the things that's going on now everyone's talking about peace in the middle east and so on and so forth and these people have to be established so that you know they can do this or that and we can move here and do that and the peace in the east and so on and so forth right so when you hear all that you know that those aren't the people why because of what's going on remember exactly if it was if the land was being exalted like it says it mm -hmm. would be it wouldn't be any war anymore if those rightful people were in that rightful land that's the thing that we have to understand this is a future property prophet uh, prophecy excuse me. that that would be fulfilled by the lord not exactly. by exactly or a council exactly man. but see now let's look at what something mm -hmm. you know we're dealing with our people in the end Future prophecy of what the end times and how things are going to come together, mm -hmm. and when the, and how it looks when the Lord pieces it together, right? So mm -hmm. now let's deal with something. Let's go to Matthew twenty-four. Let's go to verse thirteen. Excuse me. Start at twelve and read through fourteen. Okay, Matthew twenty-four. Yeah. Okay. Starting at twelve, reading to fourteen. Okay. So now we just brought our live radio audience in. What we're dealing with is we're dealing with. The end times and our people. That's pretty much what we're dealing with. And what we read is a future prophecy of how the Most High's people, the Lord's people, were going to be set up as great people in Isaiah, the second chapter. When you get to verse 4, it shows you that it's still dealing with his people that he chose because the nations are going to be a judge and so on and so forth. Why? Something happened because he always wanted... His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the Most High and His Son Christ has always been holy, upright. they always been worthy to be set apart from all. Why? Because of that righteousness that they have. So He always wanted us to be that way, but something happened along the way. Read what's going on with our people and the end times. Read. Matthew 24, 12 through 14. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Mm. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So now the end will come when the Most High says that this has been published and his time is what appointed mm -hmm. in all the nations. But we're getting little symbols and signs here from Christ, right? So he said, look it. Basically, what's going on in this world, iniquity has what? Abound. And the love of many shall wax cold. Why? 
Because once we as a people decided to go aside of the Most High's will, mm -hmm. that means that we weren't dealing with Him in love. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the love of the Most High is about what? Keeping, Obedience. Exactly. Keeping His commandments, obeying His word, being holy as He is holy. He commanded that we learn how to be holy as He is holy. He's not going to accept us until we come back as He what, wanted us to be when He created us. That's the yeah. point. Yeah. So... The iniquity came in, why? Because we left off from all the precepts, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High's word. Excuse me, word. So what ended up happening? The love of many shall wax cold. A lot of people think that this is just cruel treatment. No. This is covetous mindset, stealing, adultery, theft, murders, all that. All sins. It, it's all those sins go against what? You being a person that's walking within the love of the Most High. So this is why you got the massive... Murder, and especially the way we deal with each other in our own so-called communities. I'm still trying to figure out where that black community is. But when you have us among our people, we have all the ills that what show that the love of the Most High is not in us as a people. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and this is what it is. See, people think um, sending roses, intimacy, feelings is what constitutes love. But the love that the Most High is talking about that has waxed cold is based on what? His word not being mm -hmm. followed and applied. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. let's deal with that. Um, uh, the love of the Most High. Um, first, down five, first down five and three, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. First down five and three. Because I mentioned it, but we'll bring it out here. First John 5, verse 3. Right. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, right. and His commandments are not grievous. So now, the love of the Most High is about being obedient to His word and His will, His wisdom, His way. Mm -hmm. The reason the love of many have waxed cold, most people wouldn't know the love of the Most High if they tripped over it. And that's one of the problems. <clears throat> but the, pr the thing is, is that the person or people that's going to come out of this on the right side of the equation in the end is the ones that endure until the end. Mm -hmm. Endure in what? What it was needed to bring salvation. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So first off, this whole concept of I'm saved, born again of the blood of Christ because you got dunked in water in a pool in the back of a church or something like that, that's a fallacy. Because the scriptures say that the salvation comes when? At the end. The end. So we know what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the end. So the ones that endure in what? The understanding of what Christ came to deal with. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to understand. We don't have time to be dealing with all the things that people like to deal with. Mm -hmm. Prosperity teachings in the churches. Uh, who's the biggest and baddest preacher? Or who can do the best break dance or Holy Spirit dance in the church? Well, or, yes. or, or who puts on the biggest and grandest Hat. conferences and who wears the best hat how much uh, airplanes this guy that's the Christian church you got so called Israelite church the white man we gonna destroy you the nations we gonna you're, do this too, we gonna do that you're too light we gonna do to that church. Yeah, why you got Jesus teaching uh, yeah, we gotta do this or they call on this name or do all these other things right that's what all these aspects have done Excuse me, come in to what? Take us further and further away from what? Mm -hmm. The love of the Most High. Because one of the things the Most High showed us is that we should not be contentious, right? Exactly. But when we deal with these things, we have to be understanding that where these things are going. Because this is why the iniquity is abounding and the love of the Most High is not being what? Dealt with. Mm -hmm. Because we go into our own mind with all these yeah. things. Well, it's like a, a perfect example of that is uh, what happened in New York City the other day. These uh, men killed this kid. Right. And Or they stabbed him up and he's running, he's dying, he's bleeding out or whatever. And people are walking by, minding their own business, not calling the police or filming it. Right. You know. Right. The, where is the compassion on this kid to try to help help him? There is no compassion, right. there is no mercy, right. and there, like you were saying, there is no commandments and right. love, love of each other exactly. according to the word. Exactly. So now, when it says, but he shall endure unto the end, mm -hmm. but excuse me, but he that shall endure unto the end, mm -hmm. the same shall be saved. So what was needed to bring in salvation? The 14, the and gospel came of the kingdom to bring of God, it. repentance, exactly. Christ. So go to Matthew, let's read verse 121, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go to Acts, the fifth chapter. Okay. Just to bring it and amplify it out. Okay. So the endurance, like Paul said, it's not a race for the what? Swift? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's an endurance thing. To the and, end. And yeah. To the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, because yeah. Ezekiel 18 tells us what happens when you go a certain way mm -hmm. and then what? Turn back. Mm -hmm. All the righteousness and good that you've gone and done in that good way is canceled out. Why? Because you were committed to this, right? Yeah. So yeah. this endurance is not something that you turn on and turn off. Endurance mean what? Duration. It's mm -hmm. got this term that consistency. Cons exactly right. Mm -hmm. and, and a duration or a the period track along record. Exactly History. right. Yeah. So what are you enduring in? The thing that you need to what help you get saved. Let's go to Matthew one twenty one. Who came bringing this this thing? Matthew one twenty one. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. So, in the end, what has to happen to get to what Isaiah prophesied about the mountains of his people being established all over the earth again, mm -hmm. and us being that leader as a people, we need what? Salvation. Yeah. So Christ came to bring us to a point, right, of salvation. Why? Because we know that the love of many are waxed cold. Just look at what happened from the time we read what Isaiah wrote in the second chapter, and you go through the history and see what happened to us as a people <laughs> and what we did, right? So when you look at this thing, right, he's going to save his people from the thing they need to get them into He's going to save salvation. them from the thing that's destroying them yeah, and exactly. give them the thing they, they need, need exactly. to thank bring you, them you, back right to the you, most thank high. You. Thank you. <clears throat> so he's going to give them what they need Mm -hmm. To get back right with the Most High. Exactly. By saving them from the things that they're doing, which is their sins. But, contrary to a lot of doctrines, most of the Christian doctrines, mm -hmm. and almost all of the Hebrew-Israelite doctrines, it takes an active part of doing something on the part of the people that are being saved. Right, exactly. Right. And it's, it's, it's madness. So now, when it says... He's going to save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so now, ABC simple. What's the mechanism that he's going to use? And he's, exactly. So go to Acts, the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. Let's read verse 30 and 31. Acts 5, mm -hmm. verses 30 and 31. Mm -hmm. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand, to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. So showing you that what Isaiah said about his people being established in the mountains and in the high levels on this earth, mm -hmm. and then the Most High's angel or Most High's only begotten son reigning over them forever or him establishing his kingdom forever, right? What has to happen? Israel has to do what? Repent. Repent. And who... Who is it given to? God exalted with his right hand Christ to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to who? Israel. Israel and forgiveness of sins. So now, he was going to save his people from their sins based on one mechanism and one mechanism alone. Yeah. Active repentance. Yes. So that means that, you know, even in the last days, we have to do what? Repent mm -hmm. from our sins. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to deal with. And we have to turn back to what the Most High says and do what He says. So this is what we need to make sure we focus in on. All these other things that people like to focus on, like I mentioned, the jets and this and the white man and dust and so on and so forth. And whatever doctrine you're in or whatever, we have to return to the understanding of what, what's written in the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. According to as it is written, like He said he, when He defined righteousness, which is the faith of Christ, mm -hmm. but it was defined in De Deuteronomy 6.25, right. obeying his commandments as he commanded them. Right, so instead of questioning everything else and not looking at yourself, you have to look at what? Yourself. yourself to understand why you're in a condition. Go to Romans 13 and 1, because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't even know that we in a captive yeah. condition. It's too... It's too, so you can't quote this right. within two weeks of a government official, bro. Exactly. So th exactly. No, it's too soon, bro. Right, right. I don't know why. We can't go here. We got, we got to stop the class, bro. We're going, <laughs> we're going to incite people to riot. Right. So when Paul wrote this letter, he was writing to the Romans who were in what? That Roman establishment, right? Mm -hmm. 
And it's the same thing to us because we really haven't come out of the quite the captivity as a people mm -hmm. since Most High said we would fall based on the Assyrians and then the Babylonians coming in. Mm -hmm. We haven't been out of that state. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't realize that they're in a condition, excuse me, in that condition, just like when Paul was writing this here. Why? Because they didn't understand the condition that they were in. Remember when Paul was talking, I mean, excuse me, Christ was talking to them about in um, John the 8th chapter about ye are servant of sin. If and you know in the sin. Yeah, not only that, but they were like, yeah. what are you talking about? We've, We've never bondage. been servants We've never to been anybody. servants to anybody. But they was and in they Rome. Yeah, exactly. Captivity. They were in Roman captivity. That's why Paul wrote this. Uh -huh. One of the reasons. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we're ignorant that we're still in captivity. We're not free. So this mm -hmm. is what had to happen for his people to come to what Isaiah was explaining as that greatness that we would be once again. Mm -hmm. In the end. Read that, read that please. Uh, Romans 13, starting at 1. Right. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, mm -hmm. for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So, a lot of what people don't understand, that ordainment mm -hmm. is like they say, oh, he wouldn't put people that... No, yeah. The Most High had ordained that if we would not hearken unto his word and listen to him, he would bring the nations and use them against us. He would put those nations over us, and I think one of the scriptures, he described them as his battle axe. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's, they were, the nations were put in a place, and the reason they have to be judged is because they were put in that place by the Lord, right? And he's going to judge them for the things that they did. Because he did, when you read, uh, all you got to do is read uh, uh, Daniel. Yeah. Right? Daniel knew. Daniel knew, and even Nebuchadnezzar knew, because he wrote yeah. that whole, the fourth and, chapter yeah. is a letter from who? From Nebuchadnezzar. From Nebuchadnezzar. Talk about the power of God. Talk who about the power kingdom. Exactly. And then you look at the end of, right. what, Second Chronicles? Same the start thing. Of Ezra. Same thing. Where the, the king was like, listen, the Lord ordained me to be over the world. Right. So you look at it as just a good thing, but the Most High has declared these things to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. The end... Is going to be when we're uh, raised out of our captivity, ca excuse me, captivity, and put above all the nations. Mm -hmm. And that's one nation of people because all the scriptures we read specifically says Israel. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to understand. So now when you look at it, right, mm -hmm. you look at it, what's the condition? Read Romans 13 and 1 again. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Mm -hmm. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So, everything that we're dealing with mm -hmm. and the setups mm -hmm. that we fall under, whether it was mm -hmm. the sun that was set on the British Empire British at one soil. point in yeah. time, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or United States is the greatest conquering, yeah. Colonizing, yeah. Industrial colonizing industrial nation. Yeah. Industrial nation. They, left a, yeah. they left all that out. But, yeah, colonizing. You know, all this greatness <laughs> ascribed to these nations now is Russia, Russia, Russia. We're going to get destroyed by it. All these nations that have risen up in the different families of the earth that uh -huh. are in those things, the Most High is the one that's what? Dictating that. He's over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What he told us is what we deserve. Didn't he say that if we hearken, he's going to bless us? We hearken diligently. Yeah, and, that, and then he said if we what? Rebel and go against him, he's going to curse us. Yep. So this is part of the curses. So we need to be looking at our condition in this earth, understanding that we're captives, and then deal with what? What's the fix to get out? And we looked at it. He said he's going to what? Save his people from their, their sins. sins. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to understand. What is the mechanism he's going to use? He's going to use the understanding of repentance. And he gave it, what, in Acts 5, verse 31, to Israel uh -huh. for their forgiveness of their sins. That's what we have to understand. When we talk about the end, no, you need to be looking at what you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to end up. That's mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Because the end is going to come. Now, what equation, what... Uh, part of the equation you end up on, that's up to you. Yeah, that's a decision of your own. Ex exactly, and what we're doing is we're showing you guidance of, of excuse me, of how the, when the scripture said, he that shall endure to the end shall, the, be, saved. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. This is what it is you're enduring it because we're in captivity, mm -hmm. right? So you have to know how to, what, walk according to the Lord, repairing 
that relationship, that understanding that you have to follow him. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to understand. Mm -hmm. So now when you look at it, let's just bring this point out a little bit more. Go to uh, uh, Luke, the 21st chapter. Okay. Let's do Luke, the 21st chapter, and we'll read verse 20 to 22 and then jump to 24. Okay. Luke 21, starting at 20. Right. And when ye shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, excuse me, when you shall see, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Stop. So we just said blessings and curses. Blessings if we follow the Most High and do His will according to His wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. Curses if we say, kiss our backside, like the scriptures say, we turned our back to Him. Well, you know. Well, remember, uh, Paul in Romans three said there was no not good one of us good. Right, exactly. We was all sinners, but he was quoting the Old Testament. Exactly. So all this stuff, we have been wicked for a long exactly. time, and the Most High. Like Christ said, how many times would I have gathered you like a, mm -hmm. a hen gathers mm -hmm. her chicks? Mm -hmm. But y'all would not. We would not repent. So the days of vengeance exactly. was going to come, and it was going to be on all of us right. until he comes back. So that's the understanding. The days of vengeance are the what? Mm -hmm. The rewards for our wicked deeds that the Most High said he would give us. Mm -hmm. He told us about the stripes that we would get if we disobeyed him. What do you think all the prophets was talking about? Telling us to do what? Turn back to our God. And then specifically things were put uh, put to us in the in the prophets, how we would end up and what would happen to us, how we would end up treating each other, how the nations would deal with us. All these things were forecasted through prophecies, just like we read right here. Yep. Christ is talking about something that's going to happen. Not right then and there, but in the future. Yes. And we know this yes. is connected to what? 78 AD. The diaspora. Exactly. Yes. When the last stronghold of Israel mm -hmm. in that land went down. Yeah. And um, General Titus, Titus and, and his, his son, son Vespasian. Vespasian. Vespasian is the one that ended up, because Titus died before the campaign mm -hmm. was over. Yeah. He's the one that ended up raiding the temple. And doing Masada and exactly. all that stuff. All they took all the stuff back to Rome. So, that's, so it's not the diaspora right. to Eastern Europe right. to be bought back. Right. That's the diaspora being scattered, scattered around the world. Exactly. So okay. we already know that history. We just gave a brief, probably too much, mm -hmm. but you can look it up and Google it. But this is what Christ is talking about. Okay. And now, what is the condition of the people mm -hmm. in the end going to uh, be? 24. That's what I'm saying. Let's read 24. And they shall fall, Luke 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So the, the, the Gentiles are going to wear out the saints mm -hmm. until what? Mm -hmm. Their time is up. Mm -hmm. Isaiah hinted to it when he said in Isaiah 2 and 4, that the nations are going to be what? Judged and rebuked. Yeah. Right? Because it's not all nations. It's one nation scattered among all nations. Because nations don't take nations into captivity while they do. But in here Countries. specifically it's talking about nation, oh, families, families of the earth yes. against other families of the earth. Right? Yes. So you can't just put it all in a bundle. One nation has been taken under captive to what? All nations. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says. Mm -hmm. When it says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. They is the Israelites. Yeah. Right? And shall be led away captive into all nations. So the nation of Israel will be destroyed, destructured, and made the slaves of the earth uh, spread among who? All nations. There's none left out. And then it says... And Jerusalem, that holy city that y'all praise and swear is the city of David and all this, all these accolades and the beautiful works and buildings and whatnot. Yeah. And Jerusalem, what's it, what's it going to be? Trodden it shall be down. trodden down of the Gentiles, the nations, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We're still in the time of the Gentiles. That's why we're still in captivity, but no, don't know we're in captivity. That's why you got Catholic churches and mosques. In Jerusalem right now. Yeah, so we'll say we're free. Well, we're not free because you don't understand what freedom is according to Scripture. 
We are under captivity and we are under what? The powers that be that are of this world. Mm -hmm. Because that's our condition until we say what? They're going to be led captive and they're going to be among the nations. But what's going to happen? Read verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So now, the ones that endure until what? The end shall be saved. Mm -hmm. This is the end that you have to endure to, till you see Christ break through those clouds and you not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, <laughs> you got to keep on. You got to keep pushing. Yeah. So, do we have a lot of time to be worried about? Like, I just saw a bit video back. Man, it took me back to like 93, 94. Okay. Or it was recent because it was the younger guys when they got this so-called Edomite. I say so-called. Edomite person kissing and licking their boots. Oh, that but video. It, yeah. So I'm like, that is, but why are you even engaging in that when we got so much self-improvement exactly to do according to, to ask do this? this. Forget, we, forget it, it, about what he gonna do, or even right. their, 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 or their judgment, or their, or their judgment. That's all I to Worry about your own judgment. Exactly, and that's what we have to be in preparation for, mm -hmm. to be understanding about the end, because you know, if the Most High came today, can most of us safely say, honestly, that we think we're ready? If that's you say you're ready and you're going to make it, you are, you, you're very foolish. Exactly. Very foolish. And that's the thing that we have to really get at, you know, because a lot mm -hmm. of people talk about, oh, we're in the last days. Yeah, what does that mean? We was in the last days when Christ came. Yeah. He was one. But what does that mean to you, though? So you have to get things, what, in order. Mm -hmm. How much? I think we got about five minutes, okay. four minutes. So now let's look at something, mm -hmm. though. We talked about the mechanism that he's going to use and what he's going to do. Let's go somewhere else where it was prophesied that Christ would do this only for this one people. Mm -hmm. Go to uh, Luke, Luke one. 1. Yeah, Luke yeah. 1. Start at verse, I want to say... 67? 68, 68. Start 68. at verse 68, yes. Luke 1, verse 68. And blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from all our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to the, our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Stop. So now, what happened? Mm -hmm. It was always known that what we read about in Isaiah, the second chapter, verses 1 to 4, mm -hmm. would return back to the earth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's a process. This is why this... Mm -hmm. Person that was prophesied, Zacharias, the John the Baptist's father. Yep. Um, he came out with this understanding of what was going to happen or what had happened. He's witnessing it. But it's something that's been going on since what? The beginning. Because this was prophesied by the mouth of the prophets, which have been since the world began. So now, it's not blessed be the Lord God of everyone on it. No. Because the ones that needed to be what? Lifted up. It's a specific family in the earth. And he said it was from the house of his servant, who? David. David. Yep. Who came from the tribe of Judah, whose father was Jesse. And it was a lineage of people that this thing was what? Designed and made for. According to the right. seed. Exactly. It says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. for he hath visited and redeemed who? His people. Mm -hmm. That's very uh, uh, possessive. Yep. It Very. says, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Christ came from what? The tribe of Judah, which no one was speaking about. The Most High didn't speak about what? A priesthood. A priesthood. But he did what? He changed it and made him the what? High priest once and forever. Yep. It says, yep. this is what I like. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So consistently, this thing was being what? Published. And, 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 and noised abroad, right? So, so is there any separation between the Old and New That's Testament? That's the point. Yep. So now when we get to Christ talking about the wax, excuse me, the love of many shall wax cold, mm -hmm. and the only way you can get around that is to what? Endure to the end. Endure to the end. The gospel. What are you do enduring in? All the things that we're looking here. Mm -hmm. Christ came to deliver his people. Why? Because 
in the end, they will be in the hands of what? Their enemies and them that hate them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that that's what we're in because they put in promoting systems, whether yeah. they be religious or or, or, or so-called spiritual. Isms. Isms. And, and yep. with that, our time balance is up, and we say shalom. And we hope our people repent and hear the word of the Most High God. Thank you. www.thebocc.com